usually when you call functions that modify entities in the scene. You'll need to do that on the server. For instance, if you try to set a tag on an object from the client side, you'll receive a script error. However, there is actually an exception where this is okay. In some cases, you want entities on a client which are fully owned and controlled by that client. Neither the server nor any other client will even be aware that such entities exist. The most common way to create these client-side entities is to spawn things in from a client script. If we, for instance, spawn a box into the scene from the client tick callback, that client becomes the owner of the box and we can now move it, set tags on it, or even delete it from the client script. No one else knows that it even exists, so it won't interfere with anyone else. This can sometimes be useful for animating bodies in a very predictable way and without using any network traffic. Our character models, for instance, are local to each client and not synchronized over the network. Small pieces of debris are also local to each client and their exact location can differ between two clients since they are never synchronized. As we've learned, the same Lua file is used both on the server and the clients. Technically, this is achieved by loading the entire script on the server and then removing the client table, which includes all the client callback functions. The same thing happens on the client, but the server table is removed instead. This means that anything that is not explicitly put in the client or server table exists on both sides, but they're not synchronized. Only the shared table is automatically replicated from the server to the clients. To avoid tricky bugs and naming conflicts, it's good practice to put global variables that are used on the server in the server table and vice versa. That concludes the multiplayer scripting tutorial. Hope you found it useful and good luck with the modding.